Is there an explanation for the association of PAH with intravenous drug use or chronic liver disease? So the answer is maybe, but probably not. So we can start out, we can back up and say, if we look at PAH in general, the cause or the etiology of PAH in general is unknown. There are a lot of theories about different pathways that are um, damaged or don't function properly that lead to PAH. But quite honestly, any pathway you want to look at and almost any pathway that's been looked at in PAH is abnormal, second messengers, whatever. So if we look at the two specifics you brought off, liver disease and IV drug use, the overall answer is probably no. However, what's interesting is there may be a little hint with IV drug abuse. Aside from the drugs involved is the way you shoot drugs, okay? So there clearly are relationships or increased risk of PAH if you use cocaine or meth, okay? How that works is thought to be through stimulation, um, but nobody really knows. But if you're doing IV drugs, uh, you have no idea what kind of garbage is in that preparation that you're prepared to shoot into your veins. So there is some thought and probably some truth to the idea that you're actually microembolizing particles into your lungs, which in a way are sort of like small particulate pulmonary emboli. Okay, that probably does play some role. And in some of these people, it's clear that if you get tissue from them, either by biopsy or death, they have particles in there that either look like talc or cellulose or whatever else has been shot into their veins. So that might be a part because it causes inflammation or whatever. How does viral hepatitis, either B or C, cause pulmonary hypertension? Absolutely no idea, none. And what's interesting is you got to remember that if it was some sort of universal thing, everybody who has hep B or hep C should have pulmonary hypertension. But the estimates are n not well known, but thought to be about 5%. And that's only because those are people who are going for transplant. So 5%, even if that's true, that means that 95% of people with hep B or hep C don't get pulmonary hypertension. So the more interesting question would be is why don't they get it and why do the other people get it? And the answer is I don't know. So I think one of the more interesting things though about portopulmonary hypertension or pulmonary hypertension associated with chronic liver disease, hep B or hep C we'll use, is if, although Transplant, liver transplant is contraindicated in people who have pulmonary arterial hypertension whose pressures are still elevated because the risk of complications or death post-surgery is huge. But if you can treat people's PAH and get their mean pulmonary artery pressure less than 35 and, or, or, and their pulmonary vascular resistance under 350 and go ahead and successfully transplant them, in the majority, probably 75% or more, their pulmonary hypertension goes away. So you would guess from that that there's something about a diseased liver that somehow affects the pulmonary circulation. The theory sort of being that either the damaged liver doesn't clear some, some cytokine or whatever that affects your pulmonary circulation and or the diseased liver makes something that's bad for your pulmonary circulation. And once you replace it with a healthy liver, you get rid of that. Now, that has slight issue because you would suspect then that everybody who got their liver transplanted successfully and had a good outcome, their pulmonary hypertension should go away. But it's not 100%. Now, you could argue maybe that their pulmonary hypertension has passed the point where you just, it's not going to go away, or maybe, or more likely, there's other factors that we just don't know. But it is an interesting entity in that if you can effectively and successfully transplant somebody's liver in most of the patients, over about six to 12 months, their pulmonary hypertension regresses, goes away. <laughs>